my name is Terry Lane. We have started making a series of videos to help our customers use the CVU HPLC more effectively. Today we're going to show you how to get it out of the box, set it up, and get started. Begin by a walk through what the components are, what tools you need to use with it, and how to put it together. So to begin with, we have a pump located here which consists of a stainless steel bolt which is used to compress a spring. We measure the compression of the spring by the distance between two bearings which we will do when we we will go through when we get to the point of filling the syringe. So I'm going to begin by removing the syringe holding block from the top of the instrument going to fill the syringe with eluent. Eluent is the fancy name for the stuff that flows through the column. I don't know where the name came from, but uh, that's what it's called in, in the industry. So we're going to remove this from here. I'm going to hold this little filter in my fingers and gently twist to the left and unscrew the syringe. I'm going to pull the plunger out of the syringe gently put it here with the I sit it like that to keep any dirt from the table to get from getting into the syringe I'm going to fill it with what we call eluent and if you get between 50 and 55 milliliters it's fairly easy to to work with if you put too much it's a little bit uh, more challenging to put the syringe back in so now I'm going to put the syringe in here. So now we have the syringe filled. I'm going to put this little pipe here, this little clip down underneath here to hold the pipe. Push the air out up to the top. You have a little bit of an air space at the top. You take the, the degas syringe, which is this one up here. It should be fully compressed before you connect it. It just so happens it is fully compressed. So I'm going to take this and pull it up and put some vacuum down here on the, the liquid. Air dissolves in organics very well, and much of the eluent is organic. So I just keep tapping it. And for some reason, the shock wave, uh, the mechanical shock wave going through the liquid makes the gas turn loose. You can see it's going up in there. And this is actually meets the, the definition of boiling. So we do this, typically it takes about a minute to get all of the gas out. The gas is air, of course. And there is no magic point at which you know you have it all out. I just do it like this until it appears that uh, it's evolving more slowly. Okay, I'm going to decree at this point that, that the air is out. So I'm going to gently release this pressure. I'm going to disassemble. I hold on to the blue fitting. This is called a lure lock fitting. Remove this little clip, remove the pipe, and gently force all the air out the top of the syringe. I'm going to put it back in the, the syringe holder. It is key, this side does not have a recess, this side does have a recess. So I gently place the syringe through there, push the collar up into the recess. Now I'm going to come over to here and Gently put a little pressure on the plunger with my right hand and let the flow displace the little bit of air that's captured in there. We want to avoid getting air into the system as much as we can. So now I'm going to crack the fitting over here and let it leak. Uh, the reason for that is to displace any air that may be trapped in the lines. I want it to go out here on the top instead of into the detector. Put this one in place. I'm holding it, uh, I'm looking down through the hole 
to see all the way through. When you see light coming up from the bottom, you're there. So you push that one in, that one in, and gently hold this back, hold a little pressure on it while you tighten these down to finger snug. There's that one. Here's this one. Going, going, going. Finger snug. Now we rotate the injector back toward the front. So we're now flushing by beside the loop into the column. You can see a little puddle forming underneath the column and it's dripping gently. So now I'm going to rotate the injector to the other position. Now the flow is going through the sample loop and again out on the tabletop. So with that dripping a little bit, I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on the eluent. It's dripped enough now. I'm holding this firmly in my left hand, pushing the little 16th inch tubing inside the column as far as I can. And while that's in place, I'm going to gently tighten the fitting to finger tight. Take a paper towel and swab up the leak. Wipe this all off and get it nice and clean. Rotate that back and forth a time or two. And now we will have flow going all the way through and dripping out the back of the instrument. You should in a moment or in a minute or so, you should see some flow back here. In the meantime, I'm adjusting the flow, the pressure on the syringe to 50 millimeters of compression. 50 millimeters is the distance between the two white blocks. And that is determined by a little uh, stainless steel ruler which is provided with the instrument. There's 50, and we have a good healthy flow back here. You can see the, the drip rate. That flow rate corresponds to about about 200 to 250 microliters per minute, which is an excellent flow to get the optimum performance out of the column. So we've talked about the system. This is the pump which we've been addressing. There's a 0.45 micron filter filtering the eluent. <clears throat> this is a syringe where we'll introduce sample. Also, we have a filter, of the same 0.45 micron filter here. The idea is to keep any kind of particulates out of the injector, the column, and the detector. And with this approach, we should be successful in doing so. So the next thing in the system is the injector. It is a six port valve loop injector. This thing I'm touching here, this little round thing that's protruding out, is what holds the sample and measures the volume. This is a 10 microliter injector. This, as I've already indicated, is where the sample is pushed in, and this is the vent. So with the injector rotated back this way toward us, when I push on the syringe here, the flow goes in, goes inside the valve, goes through the loop, and comes out the top and drips. That's the way you load a sample into the instrument. And to inject it, I rotate this valve forward, away from us. In this case, the eluent from the syringe goes through, flushes through the injector loop and out onto the column, thereby putting this 10 microliters into the column. So we've accomplished the goal of measuring the amount of sample. <coughs> the next thing, next component of importance is the column. You can argue that this is the most important part of the system because we are dealing with separation science and this is the place where the separation occurs. There is an arrow on the label uh, indicating the flow. We're flowing in the direction of the arrow. It is not critical. You can flow backward, but uh, why not follow the rules? So we flow out of the column into the flow cell of the injector, out of the flow cell into waste. <clears throat> the next thing in the, the, uh, the system is the detector. The detector sees what's coming out of the column and displays it for us. The components of the detector are a lamp 
which is located inside of here. For the cannabis analysis, we use a 214 nanometer uh, zinc lamp. There's a little screw here which we may use from time to time to adjust the light level. I'll explain that later. So we have light being generated here. It goes through a hole inside of this block, through the flow cell, which is a one centimeter path length, and back to the detector, which is back here, located inside of this block. The detector signal comes out and goes uh, out to the electronics. There are some electrical connections we need to make, and while we're in the neighborhood, we'll go ahead and do those. So we connect the detector into here. We're going to connect the power supply. This is the power that powers the onboard computer here. And we're going to connect the USB cable here. The other side of the other end of the USB cable goes over to the computer. Additionally, we need to run power. This is a 110 volt power supply. We'll put the first one onto the lamp. There, there's the high voltage power supply to the lamp. Here's the high voltage power supply. To the onboard computer. High voltage here, this is just uh, AC right out of the wall. We also need to connect the computer power supply so the computer stays charged. Open this up. Now we're going to turn everything on. This switch turns the power on to the computer. A switch located underneath here turns on the high voltage lamp. And of course we turn on the computer here. Okay, now we have assembled everything. We have the pump set up. We have 50 millimeters of, of compression here. And we're going, to, when we have pressure here, we have flow going through here, we have it dripping back here. So as far as we can tell now, everything is as it should be. We have this rotated toward us. Now I've turned the computer on, I'm going to launch the software by double clicking on the C view icon. Takes just a minute to boot up. So now the software is launched. We get this uh, message here, DAC, which is data acquisition found. We come up with our cursor and click on OK. We come over here and I typically set the top. What we're doing is just setting the values on the axes. I set the top one to five and I set the bottom one to minus 100 and we come up and we select clear zero which is the default condition but when you see that the amount of energy when we select clear zero this space becomes a light meter zero percent uh, light to the detector is up here at zero down at 100 minus 100 is indicative of full saturation so we want as much light as we can get to the detector. More light gives better signal and consequently better signal to noise. So we're now at about minus 24 or so. So I'm going to come up here to the gain position. The default condition for gain is 50 millivolts per amp. Don't let these terms blow you away. That's just the way they express gain. So I'm going to run this up to, I'm going to come over here and select 100. And now you'll see that the, if we get more light through, we are amplifying the light. We're down to, down to about minus 47. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead. This, this will vary from instrument to instrument. Uh, don't 
need that message and I don't need this message. This is a brand new computer so we get a lot of uh, a lot more help from Microsoft and the computer folks than we want. So we want to run this further up so I'm going to come up here and select 330. Now you'll see that we have saturated the detector indic indicated by the detector the DAX status showing pink or red now I'm going to come back over to this part and I'm going to adjust the light level by screwing this screw down into the light path. I'm going to continue doing this while you monitor what's going on on the screen. You can see now as I turn it further down we reduce the light. Upward is less light, downward is more light. So I'm going to put this down to about 90 about minus 95 or thereabouts. Now I have a hard time reading exactly what it is from that far away from the edge. So I'm going to come over here and hit start and clear zero and we'll get to see exactly where we are. And it looks like we're right about minus 95 the lamp has been on for probably about a half an hour and this is a new lamp which is uh, not fully burned in so it will drift a while but we're going to let it drift until it stabilizes then we'll come back and we'll show you the next step.